Go with this zip. Let's get it loaded. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Miss Sally. Miss Eleanor? Uh, Jane? Now, come on, Joe. If you want to socialize, come in on your own time to it. Let's get these chores done. I usually can get one of those. Hey, how are you, Miss Betty? Oh! Oh! Good to see you. Oh, she's pretty. Hey, we're coming to see you. Maybe we gotta run there from Adam. Oh! Oh. Hey, come on. Come on, there's a letter on there from Adam, man. Hey, will you come on? You know, if you just break down and spend a few dollars, you get a pair of boots that fit. Hey, Charlie, got any mail for us? No mail on this trip, little Joe. Hi, Charlie. Will you be staying at the hotel, miss? No, I'd like to engage a carriage. Yes, ma'am. Why do you reckon anybody want to cover up like that? Well, I don't know. I'm sure we'd like to get a look at what's underneath that veil. Yeah, probably uglier than a mud fence. <laughs> well, look, you want to stand here and socialize or get your work done? Waiting a minute. I'm not sure I'll stay. Anything you say. What are you doing here? I had no place else to go. Here, Amelia, we're sisters. I need help. You're the only person that can help me. Come in. Your life shows in your face, Reagan. And it makes me ashamed you're my sister. I should, but I'll help you. However, you'll have to wait until the bank's open in the morning. You can stay at the hotel overnight, and I'll... I'll leave an envelope for you at the desk after nine. That's not the kind of help I need, Amelia. Well, I don't know what other kind of help I can give you, Reagan. Please, Amelia. Please, Amelia. Amelia, please. It's always been Amelia, please, hasn't it? Even now, fresh from your triumphs in San Francisco. You heard about that? Oh, yes, I heard. I heard about that incident and all the other incidents, too. People write, Reagan. 
There are always people to write to you about things like that. I didn't do anything. I couldn't help what happened. So I remember that's exactly what you said seven years ago with Charles. Amelia, that wasn't my fault. Wasn't it just? Well, he loved me, Reagan. For two whole years, Charles courted and loved me. And the day you came home from the school and displayed your feminine charms, he didn't even want me. Well, I don't blame him. Now, you corrupted him like you've corrupted everything around you ever since you've been a child. Judging from your last escapade, you still haven't changed. I know what I am, Amelia. But I can't change unless you help me. Please, Amelia. You owe it to me. Owe it to you! Just remember this, Reagan. I don't owe you anything. Yes, you do. You do owe it to me, Amelia. For all of the love that Father gave to you. The smart, clever one. And denied me. Please, Amelia. Well, very well. Very well, I will help you. But you'll have to do as I say. And exactly the way I say for you to do it. As I promise. Have your driver bring in your luggage. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Charlie. What Adam say, Paul? Says the assay report in Sacramento was excellent. Hey, did I tell you? When's he coming home? Oh, not for a couple of days. He's having some meetings with a firm of mining engineers in San Francisco. Hey, let me see it. Now, look, Hoss, uh, go get the wagon. We'll bring you around. Let me read it. You have all the way home to read it. Now, read the wagon. Yes, sir. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. This will do. You sure this is what you want, Miss Miller? We got a little more expensive line. This yes, is a lot this, more stylish. This is, this is what I want. This is what I want. Reagan. Hmm? Yes, those will be just fine, Amelia. Well, you'll need several for daytime and at least one good black for church. Mr. Ramos, do you have my uh, pattern in a smaller size? Oh, I'm sure I can find one. It'll suit just fine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, good morning, Amos. Did my order ready yet? Yes, sir. Got it all put away out and back. Good. Uh, excuse me, Reagan. There's someone I must see. Good morning, Ben. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Miller. Good morning. Say, I've uh, I've heard a most interesting rumor. Oh, what was that? Well, that you're seriously thinking about mining the area above Gunsight. Well, as a matter of fact, I. I have been giving it some thought. Uh, I'd like to talk to you sometime about investing in the venture, I mean. Well, I, uh, Miss Amelia, you know, mining, uh, particularly silver mining, is so highly speculative. I, mm -hmm. I think you'd probably find much safer investments somewhere else. Oh, come now, Ben. I'm not some poor widow investing a life savings. Oh, of course not. No, I'm well aware of the risks involved. But uh, I'm also aware of uh, the rewards commensurate with them. <laughs> Well, to be frank with you, Miss Amelia, I, I just wouldn't want the responsibility of having you possibly lose any money. You sure this is everything, Miss Scott, right? Yes, thank you, Ems. Oh, uh, a couple of packs of cigars for my foreman. Ben, should you change your mind, you, uh, you would let me know? Yes, of course I will. Fine. Is that stuff? Yeah. Good morning, Miss Amelia. Good morning, Haas. Your sister chose the same dress materials as you selected, Miss Amelia. Fine. Thank you, Amy. 
Uh, Reagan, this is uh, Mr. Cartwright and his son, Haas. Good morning. Hi, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Amos, please put that on my account. Here, ma'am, let me, let me take that for you. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. You know, we didn't even know that Miss Amelia had a sister, so you're kind of a surprise around here. You might say a real nice surprise, Miss Miller. Thank you. My name is Reagan. Reagan. I don't recollect ever having heard that name before, but I don't reckon many people ever heard of Hoss, neither. Hoss, that's a wonderful name. So big and strong, just like this country out here. Hey, bet you ain't even seen our country, have you? I'd be mighty happy to show it to you if, if you wouldn't mind me coming and calling. I think it was very, very thoughtful of you, Hoss. I've not had a chance to introduce my sister to many people out here. I'm sure she'd be delighted to have a call. Thank well, you, ma'am. Yes. I'll sure do it. All right. Bye, Hoss. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Miss Reagan. Joe. Here, yeah, Pa. Didn't Haas cruise that timber up at Gunsight last spring? Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember I went up there and found him bogged down in a snowdrift? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's Haas now? Oh, I think I saw him out on the front porch. I don't think he's doing anything. Joseph. Yes, sir. Feet on the floor. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Adam writes as a firm in Sacramento wants us to quote a price on half a million board feet of timber. And do you think we could handle that out of the tract above Gunside? Boy, that'll take some doing, Paul. No, yeah, well, why don't you ride up there and take a look? We're going to have to clear it anyway if we're going to do any mining. Uh, but Paul, can, can little Joe do that instead? Uh, why? Oh, well, I, I promised. Miss Reagan, that I'd take her for a buggy ride and show her the country. And of course, she ain't she ain't gonna be here long. And I just well. sure. Thanks, Paul. Get him. Get him. 
pretty azaleas. Beautiful. Coming up nicely. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, it was a pleasant dinner. Hmm. Very glad we ate outside. Well, I thought we should take advantage of the lovely weather. Hmm. You know, Ben, I don't think I've seen my sister, well, what, content, I suppose, in a long time. No horse for that matter. Hmm? It's been such a beautiful day. Yeah, it sure has. Sort of hate to see it come to an end. Miss Regan, you, uh, you made up your mind yet? About what horse? Well, about not making this just a visit, but settling down here. Well, I don't know. Settling down has such a permanent sound, doesn't it? Yeah, I reckon it does, but sort of nice sound, too. I mean, it's one that us folks here understand. Well, I don't know if it would be right for a person like me. Oh, sure it'd be right. Why, right person came along, it'd be right as rain. Can it ever really be like that, Hoss? Sure. I mean, you get married and build yourself a house, raise a family. Like they say, grow old together. Grow old? Well, that's something you ain't gonna have to worry about for a long time yet, Miss Reagan. Uh, come on, you two. We're going to have coffee inside. It's getting chilly out here. Emilia was right. It is chilly out here. Let's go in. Fine. You know, I, uh, I think the Cartwrights actually enjoyed having dinner outside. Um... What were you and Hoss uh, talking about? I think Hoss wants to marry me, Amelia. Oh. Well, are you considering it? Yes, I am. You know, you were right. Hoss is different from any man I've ever known. Well, did you tell him anything about yourself? No. Aren't you afraid it might come up? Strangely enough, I don't think it would make any difference. Do you know, Amelia? He talked about growing old together. You know, I never thought about that. Growing old. Morning, Miss Reagan. I'm just having some coffee. Will you join me? Well, I'd like to very much, but uh, I have so many things I must do in town. My son Adam is coming in tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow evening we have a little uh, dinner party at our home, and we were hoping that uh, you and your sister would join us, just family. Well, we'd be delighted. Horse has told us so much about Adam. Well, I'm sure you'll have a great deal to talk about in common. He's just spent the past few weeks in San Francisco. San Francisco? Yes, yes. Would, um, would 7 o'clock tomorrow be all right? Yes. Yes, that would be fine. Good, we'll be expecting you. Morning. So anyway, old Sally never did find out what happened to his teeth. <laughs> Good evening, Adam. Evening, Miss Millian. Adam, I'd like you to meet Miss Reagan Miller. This is Miss Amelia's sister, my brother Adam, Miss Reagan. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down, Adam? Thank you. I hope you brought some good news about the mining venture. Mining venture? Mm hmm. 
Adam, while you were away, Miss Amelia expressed some interest in investing. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid it'll be an expensive installation, but I think it'll be practical. Hey, Adam. Miss Reagan here just left San Francisco about two weeks ago. Now, I know it's getting to be a big town now, but I thought maybe you might have run into some of her friends there. Well, I knew very few mining people there, Horace. Well, I ran into quite a few people while I was there. Well, someday, maybe you can tell me who your friends are. Yes. Maybe I can. Ah, Ben, thank you for a wonderful evening. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, say, if Adam can get those figures over the house in the morning, I'll get a letter off to my broker in San Francisco. Um, going to have to convert some of my holdings. Well, I think something could be arranged. Do you think so? 10 o'clock be convenient. Hmm? 10 o'clock is fine. Reagan. Good night, little Joe. Good night. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. Well, the pleasure was all ours, Miss Reagan. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Good night, Miss Miller. Good night, horse. Thank you. Good night, Miss Reagan. And it's me that should be thanking you. This is one of the nicest evenings I ever remember. Good night, Miss Amelia. Good night, Hoss. Miss Reagan Miller. Hmm. Yep. Don't you go get no ideas either, brother. She's all staked out. That's one of the sweetest little gals I ever met. Will you look at him, Pa? Got the same expression as a steer that's just been poleaxed. <laughs> well, that's probably the expression I had on my face when I was quoting your mother. Well, he's pretty serious about her. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about time one of you boys started thinking seriously of getting married. Pa, are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> hey. Oh, I was just thinking, uh, since tomorrow's Saturday, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe tomorrow night we couldn't get some of the neighbors over here and have a little get-together and introduce Miss Reagan around, huh? Well, I don't know. It's a little short notice, but mm. I think something might be arranged. Hey, good. And if I'm real lucky, I might even have a little announcement to make. Hey, you <laughs> son of a gun, congratulations! <laughs> we were just talking about that. Yeah. And now we get rid of you. Good night, Reagan. Emilia? Yes? Could you come? Well, it's, uh, it's quite late. Yes, I know that. I just don't think I can sleep. Probably realize, of course, that Adam heard about you in San Francisco. Yes, I know he did. I could tell the way he looked at me. Yes, I noticed that, too. He just couldn't seem to take his eyes off you all evening. Or aren't you worried about that? No, not particularly. Well, you should be. You know, once Adam tells Hoss about you, that not only ends your chances with him, but all my plans as well. Well, he's not going to tell Hoss. And what's to stop him? I've yet to meet the man that I can't handle. Well, Adam is not as naive as Hoss. He's still a man. And men are your business, aren't they, Reagan? Yes. Yes, they are, Amelia. Just remember this. The Ponderosa is my business. What you don't seem to understand is I don't want the Ponderosa. I want Hoss. Good night. I'd, uh, I really would like to study these reports just a little longer. All right, that's a good idea. Sure you want to stay for coffee? No, thanks. Uh, I suppose Hoss got by and told you about the party tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. He came by quite early to, uh, to tell us about it. Oh, so that's why I didn't see him at breakfast this morning. 
He is an early bird, isn't he? <laughs> well, he's also one of the finest men I've ever had the pleasure to know. I'd have to agree with you. Listen, I wonder if I uh, could speak to your sister a minute. Yes, yes, certainly. She's, uh, she's out in the front yard. Thanks. We'll uh, see you tonight, then. Bye. Doesn't look like the same Reagan Miller I've heard about in San Francisco. Oh, you startled me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. What did you hear about me in San Francisco? I think you and I both know the answer to that one. I suppose you've told Horace. No. Well, thank you for that. Don't flatter yourself. I did it for his sake, not yours. I wouldn't hurt us. Then why don't you stop amusing yourself at his expense? Is that what you think I'm doing? Well, you are famous for the uh, manner in which you amuse yourself, at least in San Francisco, and uh, from what I've heard uh, from other men. No, it isn't true. I'm not like that. Aren't you? I did nothing to encourage those men. And what about my brother? What? Well, look at me. Do I look as though I'm going out of my way to beguile it? Do I, do I look as though I'm trying to entice him or anybody else? I won't have you telling me what to do. All right. Then I'll tell him. Tell him what? That the woman he loves is some special kind of monster? That I'm supposed to be responsible for every man that falls in love with me, but I'm not supposed to give any love back? I came here to get away, to be, to be ugly, to be plain, to hide, to get away from everything I've been. And I thought I'd found something here. I thought I'd found someone who, who didn't want me just as a, as a possession to display or a, a prize to show how important he is. Someone who saw past all of that and... Wanted me just for myself. Can you understand that? Is that too much to ask? No, I suppose it isn't. You do understand, don't you, Adam? You understand. All I ever wanted was to be loved. Just to be loved. kisses the brother of the man she's going to marry the way you just kissed me. Well, she's talking about a different kind of love. You can't really change what you are, can you? strange. You don't act like you're in a party mood. <laughs> so Reagan Miller finally met her match, did she? You think I failed with Adam, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I did. But that's because it wasn't me out there. It was something that you tried to make me. It will cost me a great deal of money, Reagan. 
But I've waited years to see you finally meet a man you can't handle. A man who can humiliate you. <laughs> Those are the two driving passions of your life, aren't they, Amelia? Money and seeing me humiliated. I tried to warn you. But whatever that devil is that's so strong in you, you wouldn't listen. You couldn't take my help. Your help? Your help made me ugly out of jealousy. Your help pushed me at horse out of greed. No, we both have our own personal devils to feed, Amelia. But I prefer mine to yours. Reagan, what are you doing? I'm taking back my own personality. I'm going to show you and Adam how the real Reagan Miller works. Go ahead. Go ahead and prove to Hoss that Adam is right. It won't make any difference. Not a particle, because Hoss loves me. And nothing anybody says can change that. Now go ahead, get dressed. I'll prove it to you. There's nothing in this world that will make me go there and see you flaunt yourself! <laughs> oh, yes, there is. Your greed will make you come, Amelia. Mr. Hoss want to see you in Punk House. He very upset about something. Uh, thanks, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Singh said uh, you wanted to see me. Yeah. Where you been? Well, you know where I've been. I've been over to Miller House to see Miss Amelia. Miss Reagan, you seen her too, didn't you? Didn't you? You asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Here we are. Good thing you know how to make, Pa. That's punch. <laughs> sure do. about ask him what's this about why were you fighting him i wasn't fighting him all right why was he fighting you Hoss, I must talk to you. There ain't nothing to talk about. Yes, there is. Now, Hoss, Adam wasn't trying to hurt you. He was trying to help you. By making love to Reagan? No, he wanted to talk to her. Sure he did. But he ended up with her in his arms and kissing her. Pa, I'm in love with that woman and I'm gonna marry her. Don't you understand that? What do you know about her? No, Pa! What did you know about my Ma when you married her? I knew everything I needed to know Fine. about her. Fine. I know everything I need to know about Reagan. You don't know everything about her. You don't know what Adam was trying to tell you. No! Pa, I'm not gonna hear anything bad about Reagan from Adam or you or nobody else. Son, don't blind yourself to the truth about her. I don't care about her past. Oh, so it's not just the past. I'm worried about the future. Yes, fine. So am I. I'm gonna marry her. That's gonna be my future. 
bother guests are arriving. Well, keep them waiting. No. They're my guests, and for my party, I'll invite them in. look pretty tonight for you. I mean, recite more than just plain pretty. Well, if you don't like it, I can change. No, no, no. Take a little getting used to, I reckon. How are you, Miss Amelia? Just fine. Thank you, Hoss. I ain't never been too good at this, but we'll try it. I found what I wanted was a man, not a pretty dancing master. Reagan, I couldn't help seeing what happened this afternoon between you and Adam. Now we'll just forget that that ever happened at all. I wanted to tell you, Hoss, but I was afraid I'd lose you. Reagan, you. You ain't ever got to be afraid of that. Thank you, Hoss. I couldn't stop it. You could see that. I know. Sister looks lovely tonight. Very fine dancer. Yes. Excuse me. Another step. Could we get some air? You have been dancing quite a bit tonight. Of course, let's go outside. <laughs> you really love this land of yours, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Then, of course, I'm rather prejudiced in favor of the Ponderosa. His horses, too. <laughs> he often speaks of it as if it were a woman. Yes. His horse loves it very much. Of course, Hoss always sees everything with uncomplicated, honest eyes. How do you think he sees me? As the woman he wants to marry. And uh, how do you see me, Mr. Cartwright? Well, 
Well, that depends upon which Reagan Miller I'm looking at. Well, do you approve of this Reagan Miller? Or do you prefer my sister's version? I would guess that the way you are now is the version that most men would know you as. I see Adam has informed you of my infamous past. Did he also tell you what happened this afternoon? Yes. I can imagine what interpretation he put on it. That's not important. What is important is Hoss, his happiness. You don't think I can provide that happiness? No. Frankly, I don't. But my son, unlike perhaps most men that you've known, gives his love freely, openly, honestly, without reservation. And even the knowledge of your past couldn't shake it. If he can forgive that, why can't you? I suppose I could. If I thought that you'd really changed. But you don't believe that? No. It doesn't really matter what you think, does it? Or Adam. Because Hoss will marry me anyway. Yes. Yes, Hoss would marry you anyway. But the love that will forgive you your mistakes in the past would never forgive you those same mistakes in the future. I won't make any mistakes. Won't you? Just this afternoon, Hoss saw you kiss Adam. But Hoss understood. Did he? When Adam came home, Hoss almost killed him. Now, what do you think would happen if you made that same mistake again? Hey. What are you two doing out here? Oh, we're just, uh, just admiring the night horse. Um, I'd better get into our guests. Excuse me. There's a, there's a ring around the moon. It could mean that it's going to rain tomorrow. Horse. About this afternoon. Reagan. I told you we weren't going to talk about that anymore. Well, what if I were to tell you that it wasn't Adam's fault? That I had encouraged him? You wouldn't do that. Well, what if I did? You ain't like that. I, I could be like anything. You don't know anything about me. I, things like that could have happened to me in the past. It's all over, Reagan. It don't matter. You, you don't have to tell me about those things. It just don't matter. No more than you getting all dolled up for this party. It, it just don't make no difference. I could tell you things that would matter. Oh, I, I know I ain't the first feller, or the only. I certainly ain't the handsomest. I got, I got a mirror telling me that every morning. Ain't nobody can blame you for searching around for something better. But once you made up your mind that I was the one, then you wouldn't have to search no further, ever. Your father was telling me how much you love this Ponderosa. What if I were to ask you to leave it, to go away? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. What if I just did? I, I hated it, and I wanted to live in a city. Well, if that's what it'd take to make you happy, then that's what we got to do. 
and leave your father and brothers? Reagan, when we're married, we're going to do whatever it takes to make you happy. can I tell you to make you realize what I am? Stop it. You stop it right now. I don't want to hear no more talk like that. Reagan, you love me and that's all that counts. Love you? Haven't you understood anything I've been trying to tell you? If I loved you, that would be the worst thing that could happen. Can't you see that? My love would destroy you, Horace because you'd have to share it with every other man I'd ever meet. How do you know? Stage is leaving, miss. forget, huh? Here. Let's go home. 